All right, guys, welcome to another video and we have Pixel Experience official the Android 13 beta that we've been using since the last two days and it's time to review this right because it's going to be very very interesting and the smoothness of Android 13 is something that we have to talk about. So before we get into the details, if you haven't already, please subscribe because it doesn't cost you anything and it really motivates us to make amazing content like this. Now without further ado, hello awesome people, welcome to PhoneOps, my name is Kalash. Let's get going. Alright, so what do we have here? We have our Indian POCO X3 Pro running Pixel Experience official Android 13 beta. This update applies to YU and Vima both updated on recently that is 13th of September 2022. Now, it is an initial release September security patch. The full change log is very, very similar. This, of course, is a beta build based on OSS vendor. It includes G apps and you can use any version of your firmware. SE Linux is enforcing, safety net is passing, and that makes things very, very exciting for us. So let's see. The moment you boot into the home screen, you will see that you're greeted with a very, very familiar and beautiful interface. That is the pixel interface, the search bar is at the bottom. Then you have these app icons themed, which I have enabled. Some of them are themed and some of them are not. Now, this is something that I would like to see fixed by Android 14, because these are popular applications, right? You know, Apex Legends, Call of Duty Mobile, Telegram, they should be themed at least. If you have a one-off application, which is new or which is not so popular, and that is not themed, I understand. But that's not what we are talking about. The moment you click on the clock, just look at this animation. I did state the same thing in my preview as well, that the animations and the overall fluidity of the user interface in Android 13 is splendid. And I can't wait for it to, you know, get more matured and majority of the issues getting fixed so that we can have a flawless experience on our POCO X3 Pro. Now, let's actually go to settings here and let's start diving into the review one by one. Now, as you can see, this is of course a POCO X3 Pro and let's click on Android version. You have Android version 13. So if you keep tapping on it, you get a similar clock. So if you take it to 1300 hours, you do get the new Easter egg. And as you can see, if you keep long pressing it, you get different, different views over here. Now you do get the September security patch and the perf kernel. Apart from that, if you actually go to settings, most of the things here are pretty, pretty similar to Android 12. But as you can see, Android 13 stuff is present. For example, the search settings is pinned over here. And if you go to apps, you don't see the game mode because that is taken away now. It is not there on my pixel as well. Now, apart from this, if you go to battery, a welcome addition is optimization profiles and that is present and working absolutely okay. You do have adaptive battery present over here and turn on light while charging. So the good thing in this beta build is that although it is an initial release, they have still gone ahead and added as many features as they can. And I'm happy to report that this ROM is running pretty flawless. Of course, there are a few things that are not working, but till now, to be very, very honest, I've not seen a single feature or bug, which will tell me that, you know, I cannot use this as a daily driver, right? Now, moving on, let's actually go to notifications. You, of course, have notification history. One small change that I noticed over here is notification history is enabled by default. In Android 12 ROMs, it used to be disabled by default. You have bubbles, which is still not supported by a lot of applications. If you go to sound and vibration, you do have your standard stuff over here, including MI sound enhancer and clear speaker that is present. Now in display, you of course have adaptive brightness, screen timeout, all the standard stuff, but you also have ambient display, which is broken for now. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. At the same time, you have 60, 90 and 120 Hertz of refresh rate, color calibration and stuff like that is present as well. Now, if you go to wallpaper in style, one more neat addition that you would notice is a lot of pixel wallpapers are available in this ROM. At the same time, if you go to launcher settings, you do have your standard pixel launcher with similar, similar user interface and settings to Android 12. Now, as far as the camera application on this ROM is concerned, you do get a very, very basic camera application. You don't get Gcam, you don't get ANX camera or anything of that sort. So you would have to figure your way around install installing Gcam of your own. There are a couple of games that I've installed and a benchmarks. I've tried those and I am thinking of making a gaming review on this. But once again, you know, let's quickly dive into settings here. 
Now, under security, you will find fingerprint. You don't really have face unlock. And if you go to privacy, the privacy dashboard is the same as Android 12. But there are certain extra permissions and features which have been added in Android 13. Do watch the video of Android 13 features on Pixel Experience for Poco X3 Pro, which is linked in the description. Now, if you go to system, you do have live translate, gestures and all the other things which are present and they work absolutely fine. For example, three finger screenshot is something that I cannot find, but you do have back tap to screenshot, which is working absolutely okay. Now let's talk about important things here. If you talk about quick tiles, quick tiles now have a black sort of a theme, even if you're on light mode, which is uh, a weird change that Google have done. Screen recorder now shows touches to you and it records internal and external audio. The animations overall in the system are pretty beautiful. And there are three new quick tiles. You know, you have scan QR code, one-handed mode and color inversion. They are present and they work absolutely fine. Active apps can be displayed here at the bottom, as you can see. And if we talk about battery life, that is splendid on this ROM. As you can see, I've used it just for 30 minutes. We are still on 83% and ah, uh, we have been active for a long time, right? So first, let's see here, 100 to 84% in 25 hours out of which we had like half an hour of screen on time. So I've been using the phone less, but yes, standby times are beautiful on this ROM. The charging speed is pretty good as well. 11% to 100% in one hour, 32 minutes. I'm pretty sure once they optimize this build more, the charging speeds will come down five to 10 minutes more. What else? Overall system smoothness, splendid. Can be used as a daily driver? I think yes, if you're okay with some novelty features giving you some issues because your safety net is passing, device is certified, Wideline L1 is working okay as well. So I don't see a reason why you should not give it a try or try it as a daily driver because of course banking applications and content consumption is something which is a strength of most of our multimedia devices and that's working absolutely fine on the Poco X3 Pro with this particular update. Now, good things aside, what about the bugs? I have just noticed a couple of bugs, which I've you know already mentioned. I've not received any random reboots, app crashes, some app not working. No, those are not the things that have been encountered by me at all. So what about the benchmark numbers you ask? Now, if we talk about Antutu benchmark, you will see we got a very good score, 592, 458. It's not the highest, but it's pretty decent. The temperature increase was 6.3 degrees Celsius and the battery dropped by 4%, which has been a standard for Antutu across this device in multiple ROMs. Now, if we further move to Google Photos, where we will check our screenshot. So let's actually go to screenshots here. And as you can see, the CPU throttled to 93% of its max performance. So the consistency of performance in this particular ROM, even in the first build is pretty good. Average score was 172, 383 GIPS and max score was 181, 839 GIPS. So pretty good. And if we further go to say Geekbench over here, let's let's actually have a look at Geekbench single core and multi core. Now, as you can see, 759 single core, 2442 multi core. The multi core score is slightly on the lower side, but I'm fine. So, I did play Apex Mobile and Call of Duty Mobile. Whenever there is an extreme scenario, like you know, a lot of enemies are present or you're having a close fight, there are frame drops. I would not say this is a perfect gaming experience because, of course, that is not the case. There are frame drops and, of course, VGMI is banned in India, so that is out of question. But it is playable, it is manageable. I did manage to win two ranked matches in Apex Mobile, which is a pretty, pretty good experience. All in all, the touch feel of the ROM, the smoothness of the ROM will make me recommend you to try this at least make a backup and give it a shot. There is an install video coming on this ROM soon. Let me know in the comment section what you think about this video. Until the next one, this is Kalash signing off at Phone Ops. Keep smiling. Take care. Goodbye.